Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story, and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. It's not too frequently that I'm in Galway Bay at 9 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. It's uh, I might be left over on a Sunday morning from a, from a Saturday night, but... Uh, we're here with Anthony Clark, who is one of the co-owners of Galway Bay, and Sean Lynch, who is the general manager of the whole organization. Of course, you've got Pirates Cove, Galway Bay, Killarney House, and Brian Baru up in Severna Park, uh, which is your Irish restaurant corporation, Irish restaurant company. And today we're talking about, because we're getting into fall, we're actually into fall, it's the end of October, which means the holidays are right around the corner, as much as we'd rather not think about that. But it is time to talk about Galway Bay and the eggnog, which I have come to love over the last probably seven or eight years myself. But we wanted to talk about it and find out, you know, is it coming back? Where can we get it? And all, all, all the stuff that goes along with it. But thanks very much for you know taking the time this morning. And, uh, of course, that wonderful Irish hospitality here with the uh, Irish coffee and uh, everything else. And no, for the record, I was not here last night, so we're sleeping it. But Anthony and Sean, thanks very much. It's good to see you guys again. Morning. Good to be here, John. Thanks for coming. Well, it is eggnog time, right? It is. It is. And we are bringing it back again, I'm assuming? We already have it in. It's, it's come across the border. We ordered early this year just because of all the container issues and everything with COVID. So we made sure we had our order in because it had to be transported in refrigerated containers across the ocean, uh, land in Philadelphia, and then get transported down for us for distribution. Okay, so then, well, there, there you go. I mean, this is obviously imported, and it's not imported from uh, Glen Burnie or some suburb of New York City. <laughs> no, made in uh, Baileyborough County Cavan. In Ireland. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, what, what is the history? Now, first of all, this is probably some of the best eggnog that I have ever had. Um, I have, you know, as, as a kid, the dairy eggnog without the booze in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then as my taste matured as an adult, I, you know, obviously you've got to add a little bit of hooch into it and, <laughs> and go from there. But this is some of the best eggnog that I have ever had. Um, it does have alcohol in it. So you uh, don't want to feed it to your kids unless you're trying to make sure that they go to sleep a little bit early that night. But um What's the history of it? Why do we why did we have to bring it here? So this goes way back for us. You know, we had a we came across a brand. This is when we were just with Galway Bay and Clarney House, I think, at the time. So we came across a brand that this uh, distributor called, was selling. Yeah, it was called Brennan's Irish called Eggnog. Brennan's Irish Eggnog. And I, I, we didn't know at the time that they were really just trying to get rid of it. But we had a niche for it. We were able to sell it. We could sell it by the bottle. And people loved it. We made cocktails out of it and started creating it. And it became a kind of buzz just in this restaurant in Galway Bay. We did that for two years in a row. And then we ran out the middle of, the last, of that last second year because they ran out because they stopped making it. So we spent the next three years... Going back and forth, Michael went over and Vincent Galway went over to, for about two or three times to do tastings with the company with a similar recipe that used to make it. And that was Terra Liqueurs based in Baileyborough County Cavan. After multiple tastings and then getting the approvals from the, the FDA, is it FDA? FDA, ATF. ATF. And all uh, the labeling. Finally, uh, a distributor and an importer. Distributor and putting all that together. Three years after that, we introduced Goa Bay Eggnog to the Annapolis community. Since that time, and that's around 2009, 2010, um, it, it has just grown in demand, you know, 20%, 25% year over year since that time to bring us to this point where we're now selling it at all of the locations, our local big liquor store here, Bay Ridge, sells a ton of it to its local customers down in that base. Um, and we're in over 90 liquor stores now uh, statewide. So that's our intention is to continue to grow it. And, and once we find, once people taste it, get accustomed to it, then they'll buy it every year as a repeat, either a Christmas gift, their own family, uh, family use 
um, or just to enjoy themselves on the rocks. How, I mean, just from a business aspect, how does this work? I mean, do you you guys import? You've got a container ship that comes over and it comes into Philadelphia, and we we get it down here. There's some probably some storage place. Do you? actually as Irish restaurant company and you guys distribute it to the liquor stores or you know? no, with the laws in the state of Maryland's three tier system, obviously. So you have to have an importer. It's made from a, a distillery imported by an importer into the country. And then a distributor, a licensed distributor picks it up. So a breakthrough beverage is our distributor and they also distribute whiskeys, vodkas, a range of other products, beers, the whole lot to it. And they distribute it throughout the entire state then. Okay, so they they the and then and then liquor stores or restaurants can order it directly off their distributor from that, and we do the same thing. We order and break through deliver to us. The recipe, what what makes it so different than everything? What makes this so good? Once I mean, I'm not looking for the secret recipe. Yeah, I mean, once you taste it, you'll notice it straight away. As you mentioned earlier, you were used to the um, the homemade or else the stuff which comes in tetra packs at a supermarket where you add liquor to it. And those are very uh, thick, if you like, um, and heavy. Uh, the recipe that we have developed is more like a, a liqueur and it's lighter in consistency and more milky in consistency. Um, so it's more, it's easier to drink and it's not overly strong. It is, uh, but it's flavored nicely with cinnamon, nutmeg and other spices, but it is, um, it's, it's an easier drinking thing. Uh, it's more an alcoholic beverage more so um, that is acceptable to people. Uh, when they're looking back on their childhood and their teenage years, if you like, they're, they're not having that heavy thing, heavy eggnog. Okay. Okay. There's a big difference between here, you know, this country and Ireland, you know, we're using, and this distiller is a reputable distiller. It makes all, a lot of the Irish creams that are on the market itself. But they use Irish cream, and that's a huge difference. Just like Kerrygold butter over here has a different butter taste. Okay, right. Because the, the milk that comes from cattle in Ireland is all grass-fed. The fat content is much higher. That's why our chocolate is different, all the reasons. And that's why the cream that we use to make this blend with whiskey, Irish whiskey that's distilled at this distiller as well, and the spices and nutmeg create that flavor that's... Similar to an eggnog over here, but has a difference. It has another angle at it, that enjoyment of, you know, sometimes people go to parties and somebody else made the eggnog and it's like, you know, they won't touch it. But at least if you bring this one as a gift to your your family gathering, you know what's in it. It's made, it's consistent all the time, and you can just add to it if you want. So you get a great base product with great alcohol, great cream flavor. So this is not a diet product, right? No, it's not. <laughs> but And that's the, the, the secret is when, once people taste it, they realize just how different it is and how much they enjoy it. Um, and as Andy touched on earlier, we get a lot of people who buy it as their Christmas present and Secret Santa and stuff like that. And a lot of people who bought it as they're traveling out of state for Thanksgiving, they buy it and they bring it as a gift and they're told, you know, the next year it's like, if you coming, yeah, bring some eggnog. <laughs> well, you said the, the growth keeps growing year after year after year. For conceptually, how many bottles or cases do you import each year to, to cover your demand? This year we increased order. We're up to four and a half thousand cases. Um, that we import and will sell through the restaurants and through liquor stores. And we we are pretty certain our outlook this year, even with COVID last year and the order that we had, we, we didn't know what would happen last year with our eggnog order because we were actually closed for a part of it, particularly for inside dining. Right. And the restaurants sell a bulk of it. And the festival was canceled, all of that. And even after that, we were able, we, we sold almost 75% of the containers that we brought in for gifts. People come to the door. They got it obviously in the liquor stores because the liquor stores were doing very well. So we sold 75 to 80%. So we were only left with a little remainder in it. The product's good for two years on the shelf. Okay. Um, so this year we brought in two containers. We're at that capacity, so it's limited. And we, we predict that we'll probably sell out just by the middle of December possibly because of the demand that we've already heard of and seen and that prediction of what we roll around because we're fully open and, and the estimated business last year we had a lot of phone calls asking us could we ship it to them you know especially for people who lived in the Annapolis area and moved away they, they were calling up saying if we could ship the uh, eggnog and we can't do that obviously it's against the law so um, we were telling them do you have any friends in the area you know maybe they're traveling to there or um, you know and even some midshipmen who are 
they're going home, their parents have been in town visiting and they've had it, so they asked the midshipmen to come by and pick some up and bring it with them. Um, but we would have probably sold a lot more uh, last year. Sure. Well, what what is the law? I mean, can I buy a case and sh- I know I can't ship it in the mail, but I, can I can I as a as a consumer? Yeah, you, can, you can do with it what you want. To it's, a friend in, with FedEx or UPS or something like that? You they can might ask you. <laughs> I, would, I would label, I'm, 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 I shouldn't give any advice on that, but if you want to call me, I can give you some advice uh, on how to do that. But technically, it's illegal to ship alcohol across state borders. Okay. So, and as Sean said, we just, you know, try and get people to connect with other people. I, I go back and forth to South Carolina, so I'll bring some for different orders for people that I know from there that I've introduced it to. So it's, it's just that annual thing. It's become part of that annual event for people during the holiday season. And for instance, uh, last year, I mean, we get, as I said, get calls from across the country, but a gentleman came down last year from Michigan. He called me ahead of time and they wanted to make sure we had it. And he drove down, he came in one morning and, uh, he said, yeah, just came in from Michigan and he was here to get five or six cases of eggnog. He was driving back up the same day. He had some Irish breakfast and then he turned around and went, drove back up. And then he said he was taking another two of those cases out with his with him to his brother when he visited him in Seattle. So, uh, you, know. you, you go to the dictionary, you look up dedication, man, you'll see that guy there. My, my word, he, he came really liked his brother. <laughs> oh, my word. That's right. And I think even with the shortages that are going to go on here this, you know, November, December, with all the containers stuck, the gifts are going to be hard to come by, creative gifts. And what you, there's nothing on the market like what we do. It's Irish. It's got that revelry associated with it with regard to the holidays in in America as an eggnog. Um, it makes a perfect gift for for any any family occasion visiting or, or, or whatever. Well, it really it really does. Now, last year you started a partnership with the Annapolis Ice Cream Company, which is sort of going through their own little branding change right now. They're I don't know whether they've done the Main Street one, but they've opened up a second. They've got a, a food truck and it's called Always Ice Cream, and they've got a new place in West Annapolis. I think they're not quite open yet in Edgewater. Uh, are they open? Not yet. They, they have just settled on a site in Edgewater. And I think they were looking to go up to Crofton and also into Saberna Park. So they're in this huge expansion mode. But tell me about the eggnog ice cream. Very energetic guys. They, they met them a few times. They're great. They work really hard at it. They came into us actually up at our restaurant, Brian Baru, that, you know, Sean owns part of that one too. So they, they just came in with this idea and uh, Heather, our GM, met them, sat down and said, OK, go try it, you know, and then gave them a bottle of eggnog. They came back and I was up there for the, the tasting of it. And I said, wow, you know, it just it just tasted like eggnog and an ice cream flavor. Um, so they had a formula down pat, and then we just went from there, and we started selling it as a dessert item with it, and then we started selling it as a container, 14-ounce container to go, so we could you can just go in and package it. And now we've been packaging it with the eggnog even in the winter as a here's your family deal, you know. And, of course, the thing is they can't sell it at their stores because it's got alcohol in it. Yeah, so you have <laughs> right, to go right. over 21 well, to buy so, it. So, I mean, that's on, your, that's on your winter menu here mm-hmm. in the restaurants? Mm-hmm. Year-round, yeah. Uh, in all the four... For restaurants. Now, when I go into Always Ice Cream or Annapolis Ice Cream, I can buy a pint or whatever. No. I just said, yeah, you have to be 21. It's got, it's got a full it's bottle of alcohol. Of okay. And they don't have the license. They don't have a license. They are just making it and bringing it back into yeah. our restaurants. It's really good. And they promote it there. And it's a, it's a niche product for them because it establishes them in the community as well. It's Annapolis based and, and they send people here to buy it. How do you, how do you serve it? What's, what's you can have it on its own, um, but we like to uh, pair it up with our Guinness cake. We make a very nice dessert, warm Guinness cake, and um, you get some eggnog ice cream on top of that. It melts into it, and it's really good. Again, not particularly really useful for a diet? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> that's the Irish answer. That's the Irish answer. Kind of diet you're on, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's food. You can indulge. Oh, that, that's that's pretty neat. Now, as far as getting this goes, we can go to any of the four restaurants that you have. Galway Bay, Killarney House, Brian Baru up in Serena Park, or Pirate's Cove down in Galesville, uh, which I highly recommend. That Eating out on the dock, even in the when it gets really cold, is is amazing. It's a great place down there. Most of, A lot of liquor stores in Maryland, if not most. And... Um, you can order it online at irisheggnog.com. Uh, but there's a little bit of a twist there because of that whole shipping thing. 
that yeah, you need to pick it up. People can go into our website as well for Galway BMD or the other restaurants as well, and they can prepay for a six pack box and come in and pick it up at their leisure. Okay, so, so they this have is to, so they have to actually pick it up. We we still can't deliver yeah. it. Um, so as Sean said, each, the Irish eggnog site will bring you to each of the restaurants to pick up the the local one near you, and then you can order it and pay for it, and then it's ready for pickup whenever you like. At the liquor stores, it, it, if depending on where you're listening to this blog from and in your area, if your liquor store doesn't carry it, you can go into your liquor store. And um, we'll have the, the code number available on the website that you can just ask your, your local liquor store and say, hey, can you get this for me? And they can order it direct from Breakthrough. Sure, they can and order they can bring it in. It, so if, if you're it's too, just a case for you or if it's... Yeah, we have a lot of people up in the, near the Pennsylvania border and stuff, especially at the uh, festival that we attend each year that ask, where can I get it? And we give them a little card and say, just request this from your liquor store owner and they'll be able to buy it in. Okay, well, this is, this is really nothing more than anything that we've become used to over the last year and a half is, is curbside delivery, if you will, or, you know, carry out the same thing. It's just a, it is a almost another menu item. Yeah. And our special licenses that we have at each of our restaurants allow us to do this. Not a lot of restaurants can actually sell litter bottles to go, uh, but we're specially licensed for that. And on the website as well, you see, we have um, uh, lists of drinks that we make cocktails and uh, it's actually very good too for French toast and you can even make a, a, we have on the menu here an eggnog pumpkin pie which is very tasty uh, so it's, it's a very flexible drink and a very flexible uh, menu item across you know desserts and things so the gift bag comes with a little gift tag on it and then a menu in it that gives you these ideas of creation of creating some other cocktails. That you they're only available at the restaurants as well. Um, they're not available at the liquor stores. And again, these, these, these cases that are in here, I mean, when they're gone, they're gone and you're anticipating mid-December. So the uh, option now that you said they're now here is to go get it now. Yes. Uh, it has a two-year shelf life. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe buy more, and if you snooze next year, you you might be okay. But <laughs> you, you definitely want to get it, Anthony. What's your what's your favorite recipe? How do you like to prepare it yourself? Um, I like it just on ice myself. But I, I know the fire nog one is a really popular one that's created. And, and when you come in here, and Galway Bay does most does of all the restaurants sells the most in cocktails. So you can come in here in a December evening on a Friday night and look around the bar and there's an eggnog drink on every single table. Different varieties, the martini or the coffee or the, the mixed ones with the eggnog and the Godiva. It works with so many things. I mean, we have... That's such a great combination. Uh, Hass's End of Days, which is uh, paired up with Patron XO Cafe. Then we have the basic Irish whiskey cocktail, uh, which is made with eggnog and uh, two ginger smoky Irish whiskey. Um, but then one of the, this, another one which works and works very well is eggnog with chai tea, oregano, uh, Oregon chai tea. So it's uh, just a mixture of that. It sounds healthier when you say chai tea. Yeah, organic chai tea. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it is a flexible drink in that respect. So um, there, we've uh, drinks uh, which we've kept for years and then we try to rotate some of the other ones but it it has a lot of flavor it works with sweet liqueurs like hazelnut and it works with um te tequila uh, so what's what's your favorite how how do you like it prepared sean uh i like it plain but i do like the uh the new version with the irish whiskey with the two gingers the smokiness is taken away a little bit with the eggnog so it's it's um it's because the two gingers is a very smoky Irish whiskey, um, it takes it away, it rounds it out nicely. Um, so you get uh, a good um, warm. Right. Uh, I, I tend to be a purist. I like to just maybe some ice, but then it waters it down a little bit as it melts, but with a sprinkle of uh, nutmeg on top and just call it a day. And I yeah. know. Uh, we do get asked um, a number of times about it, like, you know, should I have it refrigerated or whatever else? And it, it is best chilled before you drink it. Um, but. And then people ask me a lot is how long it lasts after that. And I said, I very rarely heard it last more than 24 hours as regards it's, the bottle is gone. <laughs> you would have to worry about the shelf life because the bottle goes very quickly. Uh, but it has a long shelf life at, even after it's open. Just keep it chilled. Right. My, I know my girlfriend also loves um, dumps it in the coffee. I don't do coffee, but yeah. it's such oh, just yeah. like, you know, psh, there you go. Yeah, and it's, it's a very popular uh, one. You see go out over the countertops here as well. Do your bartenders cringe? 
Because it's like a sticky kind of a. No, I mean, no. I mean, I mean as, as a former and, bartender from about twenty years ago, it was and like, they're very creative with it because it's it's a go-to. Come up with recipes, yeah. yeah. They come oh, up with the recipes. Yeah. A lot of them. Um, it's trial and error too. <laughs> they yeah. enjoy that part, uh, but no, it's actually it's an easy sell um, because people will come in, especially here, and they'll see other people drinking it, and they say, "You have eggnog?" And I say, "Yes, it's our own and whatever else." Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's. It's a it's a trustworthy uh, drink uh, giving to somebody. Um, it, it is you're not they're not going to be disappointed by it. Um, and once they taste it, people do get into it. And it is uh, it's a, it's um, it's a good fun drink. You know, it's a, it for us here. It's a good introductory thing, especially for newer people uh, who come into the area. It gets the bartender talking to them. They give them the history, and they get talking to other customers because you'll you'll see it all the time. One person's drinking it, and they say, "What is that?" And then they'll just say, "You know, this is it." This they bring this. The customers are and, selling and, it to them, and they tell somebody, and they, they tell somebody. Yeah, it's, it's very amusing when the customer, <laughs> one customer, is selling. Another customer, our drink. <laughs> it's, it's, it's right, put, put, putting the servers out of business. Yeah. And, so. and we're very proactive with the uh, the samples, for particularly for new customers or guests. And when we're packed in here or any of the restaurants and we're on a wait, it's one of those things we use to engage the customer already. Even if they're waiting for a table, maybe looking at a menu, a bit bored, then our host or maitre d's will just come around and offer a sample. So they get a little taste of something. And it's a for, for us, as we design it that way, it gives them an added welcome to the restaurant and to our, you know, you know, that's, it's all about the Irish hospitality. And it's funny, you, you've talked about that is, you know, it's, it's Irish whiskey, it's Irish cream, uh, and it's being sold by, you know, an Irish company. And, and that's just really speaks to just authenticity. And I mean, everything that you do, uh, in the three Irish restaurants per se, I mean, we'll sort of exempt, uh, Pirates Cove for a little bit because it's not traditional Irish. Um, is is just so damn authentic, and that's something that's lacking in in many aspects of our world now. Uh, and I mean, I think that there's a few Latin restaurants in town that are that are truly authentic. Um, there are plenty that that are not. I mean, it's like, yeah, hey, yeah, nachos and quesadillas. It's like, okay, well, I do that at Taco Bell too, um, and that's one of the beauty things, beautiful things about you know, all of your places. And, you know, and, and you mentioned before we started talking about uh, Pirate's Cove and, you know, sort of keeping true to the roots is that, you know, this is sort of a South County low key type of a place, um, but it's great, solid food. Um, I'm still a huge fan of the Dexter burger, depending on what it's called and whatever restaurant, but it's, I think it's one of the best burgers in, in the, in the area, but you know, you're, you're definitely to be lauded, for that, I think that's uh, it makes a difference. I think we have the advantage, you know, you know, being from Ireland. Sean, myself, Michael, um, we, we grew and up. And even there. the accents we're, are authentic. Yeah, he's, well, he's from Cork, so it's a little different, you know. <laughs> we forgive him for that. I'm from Dublin. Michael's from Kilkenny, so we grew up in in, in that kind of hospitality era of of Ireland, you know, before the Celtic Tiger and all that stuff. So that's what we brought over here with us, and that's what our our true essence is about. And that's why we wanted to create local community restaurants, which do that. And even with Pirate's Cove, and we don't incorporate the Irishness into it, just really, we just we bring the eggnog there because our customer base is familiar with it and it grows there as well at the same time because it just doesn't sell as many as the Irish ones would do. But we still impart that desire to do good food, create an experience. And Chef Steve Hardison has been able to We've been able to talk to him about Irish dishes that we grew up with, and he's been able to turn around and create something like smashed peas that we never would have even thought about. Or the curry chips that we do here is is so authentic that I feel like I'm just at the chipper van at two o'clock in the morning. You know, that's what you eat. Right. Um, well, used to eat anyway, I guess back then. But um, but that's that's what creates all of those different things. And I don't think we we would still do the same, even if we did a Mexican restaurant or something else in the future, that we would be able to create that community atmosphere, and sure. that would bring it across. Sure. Now I remember back when we were building Galway Bay and working on it and signing down the bar and stuff like that. And our thoughts then were it, we would make and build a place which was for locals and everything else, but that we also would feel comfortable in and bring that feeling in. And if we're comfortable, then we had a good feeling that everybody else would be comfortable. Um, you know, not having the TVs and a couple of other things which were different, but which were normal for us. Um, so we tried to continue that, especially in the other Irish restaurants. 
Right. Well, I know that the Downtown Annapolis Partnership is gearing up for Midnight Madness, uh, December 2nd, 9th, and 16th of the dates. So that's the Thursday evenings. Always a great time downtown because uh, you end up finding stumbling across people that you haven't seen in a year. And you, that, that's like your one night to do it. And I know in the past that you guys have been out uh, on the sidewalks welcoming people into Galway Bay as well as offering samples of the eggnog. Is that going to be happening again? Oh, sure yeah. is. I think it, this year is going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of pent up um, desire for a good evening. Uh, they missed it last year. There really they is. Fingers crossed that, that, yeah. that we're there. I mean, it's not going to be quite what it was two years ago, I don't think. But it, it will definitely be. I mean, things are just, mm -hmm. people are breathing a big, huge sigh of relief. You know, and people have used that day to get together, these small groups of, you know, maybe a ladies group of 10 ladies out trying to shop and enjoy the, the atmosphere. And they just come in, have a drink, and then leave and go out and do the rest of it. And we get a lot of those similar kinds of groups. So it's just a great day. We love it. And as I said, we do the taste outside. And I know it's going to be very busy because yeah, I gauge really it in a way as well from just talking to people. But I also know that Christmas Eve for us is great fun here. Yeah. Uh, I got a reservation. I had inquiries in March and I took the first reservations in June. So that's for Christmas, for Christmas Eve. Eve. Um, so going back from that, I know what's going to be happening through the month of December. The anticipation factor is already there. Um, you know, people calling for other reservations for different times. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a very busy month, no matter which way. Funny story, I was on Reddit um, not too long ago, and somebody had asked uh, a recommendation for some good sports bars, and somebody suggested that Galway Bay would, was one of their favorite bars, and I said, man, that place sucks for sports. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We did. And I'm like, and they're, and they're like, no, man, it's the best bar. I said, I said, how many TVs do they? How many screens do they have? But you know, even the ones that want to, work, they they sit at the bar and they'll have their little phone there and they'll be looking at their game. Or oh, it, it was funny. Galway Bay does not have any televisions in it, and it is true to its roots. I think we're the only one in Maryland that doesn't have a TV. As a pub, think of the money you save on the, you know, on the thing. Um, yeah, we get calls all the time, uh, depending on the time of the year, um, what's on either. There's only one time we've had TVs in here, and that's for diners, drive-ins, and dives. And never did about the following day. But yeah, we get calls all the time, uh, right. especially when there's Irish people in town, maybe looking for the All-Ireland Finals in September and stuff. Uh, but college football or basketball games and some football games as well. Uh, but we don't miss it. You know, it? You know it's, it's much better to make new friends. That's right. And that's what we find. It brings people in. They, they talk to each other at the bar. And that's what the, the bar, the pub scene was all about in Ireland. You know, go down and have a chat in the pub, you know. Right. Well, I'll tell you, as we wrap up, I do want to say also congratulations to 20 years at Killarney House, which has just passed. That was in September. And uh, I uh, personally, I'm refusing to believe that because that, there's no way in hell that, <laughs> that I've been around, you know, <laughs> I barely think I'm 20, much less <laughs> seeing a bar, a restaurant that's been around for 20 years. But you guys did a series of fundraisers throughout the month, and you raised nearly $8,000 for local nonprofits. I think there were seven of them that you did. And, you know, that's just, again, speaks to the community aspect of your business and about, you know, giving back. Uh, during the heat of COVID, uh, your first priority was not, putting butts in the in the chairs and you know hash on the tables it was how are we going to take care of our employees and and that really speaks volumes i know a lot of the customers came to bat and said hey we'll buy gift cards and make sure you get you know get these people you had employee funds and uh one of the most remarkable things you did during this is when you sent a memo out and said hey you know our people are great and they're getting burned out um we're giving up and it was you put it much more nicer, but we're giving up all profits and we're closing for a couple of days so our employees can spend time with their family and recharge just because you've got this whole hiring thing going on and that's going to continue for a while. And uh, it speaks very, very highly of the way you guys run your business, the way people should be supporting businesses like that. And, you know, the nonprofit and the raising the money from Killarney House is not unique just to Clarney House just during their 20th year, right? I mean, you do this all the time. We, we do the, the, the charity dinners at each of the restaurants. That's a very simple format that gives back to the community regularly. Uh, I think we're well over the $600,000 mark 
um, for for giving over a period of time. Um, Baru does a lot of them. Goa doesn't do as many because of the parking part, but Clarny does a lot too. And, and the 20th anniversary just gave us that opportunity when we were set down how to think about how to celebrate it. You know, it wasn't just that we were here for 20 years, but part of the we can't survive without the community. And even with COVID, they were our, the support for particularly our staff because we did close for a month in April and we made that decision ourselves. That wasn't a mandated closure. We could have still done carry out and everything else, but we had back of the house people and everybody to look out. We, we started that employee fund, which was generously given to, and we kept people employed uh, during that period. And then when we came back, the community support through, you know, when it was carry out orders, how much tipping they were doing, um, and sending in, as he said, buying gift certificates for future date, all kept them back. So the the opportunity of the 20th year anniversary was really that. It was how do we give back? So we matched all of the charity dinners that we did and we picked and we went to ones that we've been working with for the 20 years that we'd been in business there that had been supporters of Clarny House. Um, and they came up, we did the dinners that whole week or over a 10 day period. And yeah, it was close to eight thousand dollars that we ended up giving back within that week. That's fantastic. Sales. So it was great to do. And this and this is not. I mean, again, if you are involved with a any kind of a nonprofit, if you've uh, you know a neighborhood uh, is getting together to help somebody that has some outstanding medical bills, we've done that for staff members here who've been going through medical crisis, and the staff have contributed. We've done fundraisers for them and been able to keep them back on the straight and narrow to care of their rent uh, and stuff like that. And that's for our own people as well as other people have done it for other people. And if you want to have a, you know, a good time, we just re brought back in the, the quiz on Tuesday nights here at Galway for charities. We had it suspended for, we had it at last November, uh, October time, and then we were cut down on restrictions again on seating. So we've only just been able to get to the stage where we can start the quizzes up again, which are all for charity. Um, so that's a bit of fun on a Tuesday night where people can come in and take part in a quiz, pay $10, and then the winning team gets to pick the charity. We don't know who it's going to be each week, but um, you know they can right. get anywhere from 60 to $100, depending on how many teams take part. But that was fun bringing that back because we'd had a lot of requests to bring it back, but it was just, we weren't able to do it for the longest while. I will say that the the pub quiz nights, that's not for the faint of heart. They take it very seriously. They do. Oh, yeah. John's a very good host at this and keeps them all under control. Yeah, the quizzes, uh, Nobody they can get um, very uh, contentious about some of the questions. It, there there was one, not it wasn't here, there was another one where it was, uh, I should have known better, but I was playing, had a lawyer on our team and disputed when uh, Yes had released some album back in the 70s and he knew that the original release was in Britain like a month before the US release and I mean he just went to the host and he was all over it and he, I mean they were like look dude shut up or you're throwing you out <laughs> we're throwing you it's, it's, it's a game it's yeah like, it's it's like, like, it's no. sometimes you write a question down and you think you're very precise about something and then somebody comes up and says no it's not that you know like can you read it this way you can read a question but two ways and you know what it's like it's, you know, it's, I, it's the I, way I wrote it and the way yes. I'm answering it. That's what, that's right. what John has to declare at the beginning, that his result is final. I've been here. It's good, it's good fun, but it is definitely challenging. So, uh, But it is for charity. That's the other thing. Yeah. It's fun. And that it is. That's, you, you leave with a belly full and, uh, and a heart full. And that's so. part of the fun part of it, the contention. True, true. Anthony Clark and Sean Lynch, thank you very, very much. We're here again at Galway Bay on Maryland Avenue, one of my favorite streets. Want to make sure that you hit it up on Midnight Madnesses, which is the 2nd, 9th, and 16th. Get a sample of the eggnog if you've never had it. Uh, come into any of the restaurants, Killarney House, Galway Bay, Brian Baru, Pyrus Cove. Uh, samples are available there. You can get your bottles there. You can get a case there. You can go to your probably your favorite liquor store and ask them to order it if they don't have it and get it soon because it's not going to last very long. I know that uh, two years ago, it got very light at the very end of the year. It was just, yeah, you'd really have to go searching for it. Christmas but. Eve, we sold out here. I remember that day. Mm. But uh, I am looking forward to restocking my shelf again. And uh, I, if we don't stumble across one another before, but have a very wonderful holiday. And again, thank you very much for everything that you do for the community. We appreciate it, thank John. You, Thanks for being here. Appreciate it very much. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. 
And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.